Hi everybody, it's me Cavendu. Recently, I finally managed to finish the new controller setup for my Anet A8 3D printer, consisting of an Arduino Mega, a RAMS 1.4 shield, some A4988 stepper drivers and a new LCD screen with rotary knob. All parts are available for under $25 on AliExpress, and at the time of recording, all parts except the Reprop Discount Smart Display and Adapter arrived. So I had to improvise and ended up borrowing the display of the Anycubic Castle, which is completely the same, and soldering an adapter myself. After unpacking all parts, I put the RAM board, short for RepRap Arduino Mega Pololo Shield, on top of the Mega. Unpacking the A4988 stepper motor drivers and putting the heatsink on the chips without touching anything else was the next step. Then I inserted three jumpers under each driver's location, indicating the driver to use the most possible amount of microsteps, yielding the best available resolution. The A4988 drivers get plugged into their designated spaces, facing the correct orientation, which is described by the potentiometer facing away from the power plugs. Be careful if you have other types of drivers, for which this rule doesn't apply. Then I connected the new controller to the PC via a USB cable. As I want to install Marlin again, I just copy the files from the setup on the ANET board and open the .ino file. If you haven't seen this video, I suggest checking it out as well. The first change is the main board, which is now a board underscore rams underscore one four underscore EFB. All boards are listed in the boards.h file. The EFB setup uses the three power outputs for the extruder, parts cooling fan and heated bed. Furthermore, the LCD changed, therefore we comment the default ANET keyboard controller out and uncomment the Reprop Discount Smart LCD. If you have any other of the supported LCDs, uncomment their respective line instead. And after choosing the correct board, CPU and port, it's time for hitting the upload button. Once the setup restarts and the Marlin logo shows up, you know that you are on the right track. The only thing that annoyed me at this time was the direction of the rotary encoder, but that was quickly solved by uncommenting the reverse underscore encoder underscore direction. Now it's time to install a new controller. I recommend printing a RAMS to ANET board adapter before doing the change. After the old one is removed, it's time to connect all wires. You might need to cut the original plugs in some cases and sew the new pinhead plugs on. Make sure to install everything in the correct orientation. Also, be careful with the end stops. If you have some that only switch through when they are triggered, like the ones found on the ANET A8, connect them to the upper and the middle pin to get it working. The RAMS has two distinct 12 volt circuits, namely the 11 amps one for the heated bed and the 5 amps one for basically everything else. My 20 amps stock PSU is strong enough to support both circuits at once, so I connect them with 1.5 square millimeter wires using fast connectors. An external MOSFET for the heated bed is always a good choice. Once everything is connected and the expected short circuit and power on didn't happen, it's time to calibrate the stepper drivers. The maximum output current needs to be regulated, as too less lets the motor stall and too much overheats them. You can adapt this maximum current by changing a reference voltage via the potentiometer. Use a preferably non-conductive Phillips screwdriver to increase the voltage with a clockwise turn or decrease it with a counterclockwise one. If you only have a metal one, be extra careful not to touch anything else than the potentiometer. The correct voltage can be calculated mathematically, but it's worth to notice that different A4988s have different sensing resistors, so there's no universal setting. I recommend using a multimeter in DC voltage setting to read the voltage between the potentiometer and the common ground found at the input plug. Use common sense when playing around with the values. Once the motor seems to turn properly, start a print and check back after a few minutes for the temperature. If they are too hot, decrease the voltage even more. It might take some iterations to find a proper setting. I ended up using 1 volts for the C-axis as there are two motors and 0.5 volts for all the others. Of course I encountered some problems, namely two broken stepper drivers and a physical connection between two power transistors, touching themselves with the metal casing, leading to the parts cooling fan controlling the heated bed as well and vice versa. Once the upgrade is done, the printer should behave like it did before. It's worth to mention that my ANET board is still working fine and the single reason for this change is an approaching dual extrusion upgrade. Stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you encounter some problems or have any questions, feel free to ask. 
All links are down in the description. Thank you guys for watching this video and see you soon. Have a nice day.